it's not confined to a church or church walls or a church system, but really extends to every aspect of our life. And so once you realize that, you can live in that abundant freedom, knowing that his purpose is going to be accomplished. I immediately felt scared and worried and my fight or flight for sure kicked in. I was like, I've got to get out of here. I'm not ready to deal with this. And I didn't. I, I put my shopping cart away and I went out to my car and I cried because I... Uh, a mantra that you've learned. And so you can regurgitate those those phrases and those ideologies, but have you ever really studied what those are to find out if you actually believe them? Well, welcome to the Grace Escape Podcast. Another episode. I'm Tiffany. And I am Justin. And through Grace, we escaped a high control, fundamental, Pentecostal church that we spent over 30 years in. And we thank you today for joining us because we're sitting here on our couch talking about it. Yeah, we want to welcome everyone that's new and also uh, what we call the Grace Escape family that comes back each week to... Uh, Listen to us sit around and chat about our journey out of yes. the United Pentecostal Church system and those that are in or were in systems like it. Yes, it can be a very long, hard journey, um, but it's worth it. And uh, Christ walks right along beside us through the whole thing. So yes, we like to be encouraging to anyone else that is going through the same situation, wherever you're at. And today, um, we want to talk a little bit about how, when you've been in these controlling systems for so many years, uh, maybe you were raised in it, I was raised in it, um, maybe you've spent many, many years, maybe not that much time at all, but you can start to develop dependencies that are unhealthy, and uh, you can, through the process, you can kind of lose yourself. Well, I think your identity becomes, in many cases, so wrapped around the church system. Yes. And um, if you're involved, to what degree, that can be a lot of your free time, not including the services that you're spending. And so it can really um, become so much of your life that, yeah. that you can form an identity around it. And then yeah. when you do leave, it can, can feel maybe like a bit of an identity crisis. I know right. that you can feel both freedom when you leave, but then also you might feel a little bit of an identity crisis yeah, at like, the same time. Who am I at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. And so a word we might kind of talk about today is autonomy, Christian autonomy, which is autonomy. Being autonomous is not being controlled by others or outside forces. You're independent, right? So when you um, are in these sorts of controlling systems, someone, it seems like someone is always over your shoulder telling you every step of everything that you need to do and you need to believe. And you lose that skill being able to do it yourself. Yeah. So. And that's, it's so important to be able to discern and to also work out your own salvation and those sorts of things. But yes. if you have been in a high control system and being told how to think, what to do, what to wear, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things, then it can feel very scary almost yeah. that you have that freedom to make those decisions. Of course, with the Holy Spirit helping and guiding you all the way. And because yeah. this is the Grace Escape podcast, we realize that our true identity is rooted in Christ. Yes, it is. And that is not dependent on any adherence to a church structure or a system. It reminds me of the verse in um, Acts chapter 17. It's verse um, 28 where it says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. So we yes. know that our true identity comes from Christ. But today we're going to talk about it maybe from a little different angle, right? Yeah, I wanted to read 1 Corinthians six nineteen and 20, which says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. So he, he bought us 
right? A long time ago before we were ever even here. So we can rest in knowing that he is the one that leads us and guides us along the way. So, Yeah. And sometimes those scriptures coming out of these systems can, can mean different things. That's why we talk a lot on the Grace Escape podcast about understanding scripture in context and not filtering them through um, an authoritarian mindset mm-hmm. or a high control fundamental viewpoint, but right. really understanding the freedom that we have in Christ. But I think today our episode will look a little different because the last several we've been really looking at different aspects of the church system and mm-hmm. and pulling out clips from different pastors and church services. Um, but today it's going to look a little different because we're going to kind of look at it at more of a practical yes. view. Yeah. And just right up front, we are not therapists. We do not claim to be. Obviously, do not nope. use this disclaimer. Do not use this these steps as you know, professional help. And uh, we do say that if you feel like you do need professional help, therapy can be very helpful during times like this. Yeah, we just want to ask some questions and give some practical, maybe look at some practical ways to regain your autonomy as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And it's so important once you get out of these systems to to just take time to breathe and and look at the bigger picture of life because sometimes the church system has narrowed it down so much that you can feel lost. And yes. so today we're just going to look at some of these things um, from that kind of a point of view. Yeah. And um, we're not advocating for being an island unto yourself. That's not what we mean by autonomy. Of course, Christian community is very important and necessary Um, but we're just kind of making the point today that community, Christian community doesn't mean someone is over your shoulder telling you this is the right way. This is the only right way. Right. Um, so believe it or else really. Right. So before we jump in, uh, let's read our theme scripture. If you're new around here, this is the, the theme scripture of the grace escape podcast, and it is Ephesians two verses eight and nine for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. I wanted to read verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So salvation through faith is a gift from God. It's not given to us by a pastor or by a parent or by a leader or by a church system right? This was a gift from him. So, and those in, in uh, healthy contexts, those can be people that help us grow yes. by helping us to read they the Bible yeah. and they do, but, but ultimately salvation comes from Christ and it's important to remember that. Yeah. And if you've spent a number of years in a system like the UPC or something, you know, uh, another organization like that, you are very integrated into everything. So we just, again, want to talk today about how to come out of that and just kind of exist in a world that we didn't know anything about. It can be very scary when you first leave to be thinking for yourself, right? Right. Rather than someone telling you so. So uh, I guess a good first step would be really recognizing and acknowledging the harmful beliefs that shaped you. Yes. Saying, here are the beliefs that made me who I was in this organization. Are they aligned with who I really am, my values and my identity? And ultimately, do they align with scripture, right? In That's context. The thing. Yeah. yeah. And did I come to these beliefs on my own or was I taught them and now I believe them because I think they're true? Or was I just completely devoted to a charismatic leader? Yes. Understanding the mechanisms of these controlling systems is so important as you're coming out. You really have to sit down and say, this is what I believed. Does this line up with who I am? And Sometimes you are raised in it as a child, like we said. So you have decision-making skills that are that are affected for the rest of your life sometimes because yeah. of... So forgiveness is important in this sort of way, especially if you were raised in it. Um, you have to forgive those that maybe raised you in a system that 
has been harmful for you. And forgiveness is important as part of recognizing these belief systems that you spent maybe years in. All your life, maybe up until the point you yeah. realize that, whoa, something's wrong here. Right. So I think, yeah, acknowledgement is is huge. It really is, it right? Is. Um, it, which is so hard to come to that. I think it's what holds a lot of people back is coming just to the acknowledgement that, hey, I was, I was deceived in a way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. All while being told that, you know, everyone else is being deceived. Yeah. It's a really, I mean, it, you come to a hard decision point. Yeah. Yeah. Admitting is the first step to recovery, of course, and saying, yes, I, I chose this, right? I, I depended on someone else to tell me what to believe, or I allowed someone to teach me harmful beliefs. Or even I treated others poorly based on these um, destructive yes. practices, right? I mean, we've yeah. talked about that, the attitudes that you have, the, the ways that you look at other people because of the belief systems. Yeah. So contrary to actually what God's word teaches us. Right. Just taking responsibility for those things. Being the man in the mirror is not easy. <laughs> and we tend to want to blame others. Really. And I just want to say, like, today we're not talking about um, a pastor or leader or parent's role in this in our lives. We've talked about that in the past. We will definitely talk about that in the future. Today we are looking at us, right, and how we allowed certain things in our lives. Yeah, and acknowledging that those people had a huge role, again, yeah. Um, understanding that again, sometimes it is the only thing they ever knew. Yes. Um, and also forgiving them is a, such a huge first step to moving forward out of your identity wrapped in this system to a, a healthier identity. It lifts a burden for sure. Um, so a lot of healing can come from that. Yeah. And really allowing yourself the time to process through this and not expecting to get through it overnight is, is yeah. important. It is important. Another thing is educating yourself and you can do this through a lot of different avenues. You can study what it's like being in, you can study what it's like trying to get out or what it's like being out, but that's important to do. Yeah, one of the things that was really helpful for me was identifying the control system that we were in and um, a, a great resource that we've linked to before and we just want to bring it up again is uh, Dr. Stephen Hassan's Bite Model. Yes. And we have a free link to a PDF and, and we'll link to his website um, as well. But it's it's so important to understand just what mind control is. Yes. And that can be a scary term. It can it can seem like, no, I wasn't, I, I didn't have that happening. But when you actually look at the BITE method, which is an acronym for behavior control, information control, uh, thought control, and emotional control. And as you read through these, you can really see how, how much of an effect it had on you. So this is a really great resource. We'll link it below. And um, it really helped us in our journeys separately separately out to really understand because knowledge, knowledge is so powerful in coming out. It is. It is. And one of the, one of the um, things is information control. And so with educating yourself, this is such a freedom to know that I'm not being told you can't read this. You can't listen to this. You can't watch this, but you're able to view all points of view and really make your own decision. Right. Yeah. And again, there's so many, great resources out there. We've linked to some of them. I think about the subtle power of spiritual abuse. I really recommend that book yes. to everyone when you first get out of the system. Um, it's just so helpful to understand how these systems can, can have a subtle underlying way of abusing people through spiritual okay. and religious means. And you, you might not even recognize it. And the, the digital age offers so much convenience and access to a lot of things. So we really don't have much of an excuse either. And we should be educating ourselves. There's 
recovery workshops. There's Facebook groups. Yeah, I think about even um, the resource spiritualabuse.org that we've yes. mentioned before. We aren't personally on Facebook, which is a little, you know, uh, disappointing. Sometimes we can't interact with some of these communities. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, if you are, we, we recommend uh, spiritualabuse.org and some of these Facebook groups are a, really a great way to connect with people that understand what you've been through. Yes. And um, they can provide other resources as well. I know that Lois over at Spiritual Abuse has tons of great links and resources on spiritualabuse.org. I know how much confidence this brought me. Knowledge is power, as they say. And um, I didn't have confidence when I grew up in the UPC, Mm -hmm. even really about what I believed. You know, I, I had the scripture references, of course, for all the things that we were taught, but um, I was never confident. And now being out, I mean, I can just reading the Bible alone is so much more powerful for me and means so much more to me. And I'm soaking it in, in a much different way. And it does bring such confidence. So educating yourself is, is very important. I wanted to point out that they teach you in these systems to ignore your chemical reactions, like your your body, your gut instincts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Based on, of course, Jeremiah 17 and nine, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. That's KJV, of course, but um, I just want to encourage someone not to ignore or suppress um, your your organic feelings that happen, like the chemical reactions of your body. It's such a huge point you're making here because in these these systems, that is one of the ways they control yes. so heavily is saying any kind of thought, any kind of feeling, any kind of red flag that's coming up against what we're teaching, against what's going on yes. is you better be very careful because that that that's the devil deceiving you or that's your heart. That's, you know, and that's not even what this scripture that you brought up even it means at all. No, the, that is speaking of our sin nature and how there is no cure for that until heaven. Of course, we are sinners, but that is not telling us to ignore, you know, fight or flight, these things that happen automatically when you're, when you're questioning and you're like, this doesn't feel right to me. Mm-hmm. Um, please do not ignore those and don't let anyone suppress those, especially with abusing scripture at yeah. you about if it. If you're still in one of these systems right now and you're in the process of getting out and uh, by no means because we're out of it now do we diminish what it takes to get out and that journey is so unique and uh, for each individual and yeah. so um, we're praying for those that are still in we're praying for those that are um, on their process out and obviously still those that are out but are still processing all this yes. stuff but um, as you said it's so important to really check yourself what's going on in these services and go wait a minute write it down, think about it. Don't let it, don't ignore it because it is, it is your, it's your God given brain telling you something's wrong here. Yeah. I think you said that in a past episode, like write something down if you're questioning it during a sermon um, Mm -hmm. and then take it home and study it through a good commentary. I mean, education does wonders for sure. So the third thing would be establish boundaries and assertiveness. Oh, this is an important one because we weren't, we weren't allowed to say no. We weren't allowed to draw boundaries. I remember the one time I said no to the pastor about doing something. I was asked at the very last minute to do something and I, it wasn't going to be possible. And oh boy, did I find out that you're not allowed to say no. Yeah. I found out about it actually through a third party. So it Mm kind of went around to a few different people too. So it's unfortunate uh, they don't like it when you tell them no. They don't. They don't want you creating lines for your own self. And you should be able to do that. We weren't allowed to even miss church because of um, an out of town guest coming in, right? And wanting to spend time with them. Because the church was always elevated above anything else in your own personal life because the Holy Spirit always or the Holy Ghost always goes to church. And so if you're missing church, then 
you know, you don't have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost would go to church instead of actually being able to make those decisions for yourself. Yeah. Like you said, if a, if a special long time friend that you hadn't seen in 20 years came into town and you, and you, the answer would always be, well, you just invite them to church, <laughs> come with, come with You're us right. to church. Instead of saying, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now and, and actually fellowship and spend time and have a relationship with this person, which is far more important than, than just punching the time clock of going to a church service again. It's just crazy when you think about it that way. Yeah. You're not going to miss something by missing one service. I mean, you're going to be sick at some point anyway and not be able to go like it's, it's crazy. One example I thought of about um, people who are pushing your boundaries or trying to test your limits for sure is when maybe you do leave these systems and you have people trying to contact you to let you know that you are in danger because you've left. You are, you know, in a backslidden state. I'm really worried about you. I um, was up praying for you. These sorts of scary things that they do. Um, I just wanted to give some practical steps that you can take. Because again, when you're not allowed to say no, you're not allowed to draw these boundaries for yourself. You don't even know how to start. Mm -hmm. And a good way is to start small, right? So maybe for that day, you don't text back or you don't, you don't respond right away. You know, maybe today I'm not, I'm not willing to put my, emotional, you know, capabilities into that today. I'll deal with it tomorrow. And it's just starting small with the small things that you can control um, where you start to build those lines. And then after starting small, start working on being clear, right? Like um, I believe, I believe how I believe, you believe how you believe. And I'm asking you to respect are my belief system as I am respecting yours. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with saying, um, you know, at this point in time, we need to um, not have this conversation until right. we can both respect the position that we're in and our beliefs in Christ. Like when you respect my um, decision and where I'm at, I, as I'm respecting yours, then we can move forward with this. But right. until then, let's that's, this is an off subject conversation, right? Right. Yeah. And then just practice, like take every advantage, take advantage of every chance that you get to draw lines. And this is again, not to draw fences around yourself, to isolate yourself, to, you know, cut yourself off from people. That's not what we're talking about, but being able to, in a healthy way, say, I'm going to draw lines where I think it's healthy for me and my family or my marriage or whatever, my children. Yeah. We pulled this Dr. Henry Cloud quote from um, one of his books, and he's he's a renowned um, writer on boundaries. And this quote says, we can't manipulate people into swallowing our boundaries by sugarcoating them. Mm. Boundaries are a litmus test for the quality of our relationships. Those who respect our boundaries truly love our wills, opinions, and separateness. Those who can't respect our boundaries reveal that they don't love our no's. They only love our yeses, our compliance. Oh, man. Yeah. I just think about all the times that I just said yes because I knew I had to. There was no other way, right? You didn't want to ruffle feathers. You didn't want to upset the apple cart. All yeah. those things, right? So learning to say no, for sure. Um, that's an important step to take as you are reclaiming your identity. I think d- you, you're you taught to, in the system, to deal with conflict um, by talking about people rather than confronting people or talking to people. Yeah, we really need to reverse that. We do need to reverse that. Mm-hmm. Um, scripture, I mean, talks about that that we should go to them and them alone, right? So, and that's a healthy way of dealing with issues. Um, 
Another one would be financial boundaries. We've talked a lot about the greed in the church and tithing and that in uh, some previous episodes. And uh, it's so important to get a better idea of what financial boundaries looks like once you're out of the church, because so much of what you think about money may be had may have been very manipulated by um, twisting scripture and that sort of thing. Yeah. And just giving outside of your budget and, you know, giving more than you really should, like you may have to uh, redraw those lines for Mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I just think about learning to really clearly communicate what you need and what you want. That's, that's important. That's an important part of being assertive is saying, Hey, this is actually what I need. I'm working on that right now with, um, my employers. I, I'm a people pleaser by nature and definitely growing up in a performance-based type system. I just did things because I was told to, and I never really clearly communicated, Hey, this actually doesn't work for me this Mm -hmm. time or this go around. And so, yeah, I think it's comes from a distorted view of what authority looks like in your yeah. life. Because yes, we do have authority and we need to respect those in those positions. But we talked in a previous episode and we'll link it below. Um, if you haven't heard it, the pastor versus biblical authority, really understanding what biblical authority looks like can be very helpful. Another way to draw a boundary would be feeling free to disclose or not disclose, share or not share information with whoever in your um, that's in your life, like a pastor or a yeah. counselor, um, when they're asking very private or even inappropriate questions. You yes. need to be able to feel like they don't have the right to pry into those places in your life. Um, a lot of times that comes from, again, a distorted view of what the pastor is in your life and you feel obligated to share all those things. And in a lot of cases, then it will be turned around and used against you. Oh, yeah. I've heard hor- horrific stories about pastors doing their own marriage counseling um, and then asking then separating the husband and the wife and asking the wife to describe, um, you know, intimate details of their marriage. And it's just like, that's so inappropriate. You should be able to say, you know what, I'm actually going to get up and walk out of this. This is so inappropriate. Yeah. I know of a situation where the pastor, um, told the person to not tell their wife that they were going to be having a meeting with the pastor and a former relationship Um, because that former relationship was having an issue and he wanted to work it out with them. And the pastor said, well, no, you don't need to tell your wife about this. I mean, things like that. um, We've heard these stories firsthand. Yeah. Red flags for sure. Another good way that you can start to reclaim who you actually are um, as a person or as a Christian, for sure, on your own is to redevelop critical thinking skills or maybe develop them. Like, I feel like I never had them, quite honestly. Yeah, when you're so dependent on a pastor or a parent or a leader to do all the instructing and all the explaining, it really limits your critical thinking and you suffer from it because you've become so dependent. You might not even have the skills to do that. Yeah. I mean, saying to yourself, like, was I taught this scripture or passage? I mean, I just think of the Sunday school stories that you're told, you know, was I taught those in context? Yeah. I was just watching a UPC pastor just the other day, take a passage of scripture that is very clear in what it was meaning and say, well, yeah, we know that it means this, but it also means this in a broader context, Mm -hmm. completely twisting God's word to um, just to control people in a way of making it seem like what he was saying was greater revelation. Mm. Really dangerous um, when you really look at that and you you only come to that knowledge once you develop the critical thinking skills to, to again, like write down what they're saying and go back and go, this doesn't make sense. A yeah. lot of the words that they say, even, even in the tongues, when you write down the tongues, the interpretation of it, when you write it out, it doesn't a lot of times make any sense or it's just, you know, vain babblings or... Right. Um, if it's in God's word already, then we don't need another revelation of it because we already have it in God's word, right? Yeah. All new information or, you know, through sermons or through anything, I mean, anything, the media, the whatever, 
um, should be getting a cautious eye. Mm -hmm. So I remember when you started to study your way out, basically, right? You were still attending church and you were very diligent during sermons about looking things up in the Bible and you would go and look at other areas of the Bible. I was watching you and you were writing things down and I knew you were diligently listening and that way you could go home and really study, hey, does this match what? Yeah, and and a lot of times it would be like, I would just go up and read a few scriptures yeah. before it and I'm, I would go, whoa, this is not even the context of this passage at all. So it's important to do that. Yeah, actively listening is something that is very important for developing critical thinking skills. Uh, really, really take into account what someone is saying to you. Yeah, I think as we move forward, um, all new information really has to get a cautious eye. We really need to take the time um, because we're living in this fast paced informational generation where things are changing so fast. And now we have the whole AI thing and so yeah. hard sometimes to know what's real and what's not real. And um, so we, we need to take time to cautiously and critically think these things through. It's really yeah. important. And considering more than just your own point of view. I mean, I've, I can't tell you how often now I've changed my mind on so many things, just normal life things, because I'm out of a system that was controlling my thoughts about things. Yeah. There's a term that you may have heard over the whole last few years, cognitive dissonance. Yeah. And it's, it, it's being wrapped up in your own thinking where you can't even see any other point of view and everything you interpret through that. And so it's so important to question our own biases sometimes yeah. and to look at the other side. There's nothing wrong in looking at the other side there and going, isn't. okay, I can understand where you're coming from at least, right? I used to think that was scary. I'm like, I can't even consider, you know, um, like child rearing is a big one for me. <laughs> you know, I thought I knew and I don't have children, so that's even f more ironic and funny. But I always knew in the back of my back of my mind, this is how I'm going to raise my kids: A, B, C. You know, mm -hmm. black and white Bible. And um, I and don't know. I just hear so many different views now and see so many different. And you've changed a lot of and your I've opinions. Changed. Yeah, and right? so and there's nothing like you said. There's nothing wrong with that. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah, I think part of that comes from not actively listening. If you've heard the same thing over and over again, a lot of times sitting in these services, you can just kind of turn your brain off. And so you're not really actively listening, but there is stuff going into your ears and you're not processing that um, critically. And so mm -hmm. it becomes just a, a mantra that you've learned. And so you can regurgitate those those phrases and those ideologies, but have you ever really studied what those are to find out if you actually believe them? Yeah. I'm just thinking about, you know, saying amen to the, to the pastor when he's, when he's preaching his sermon, he may have said something so wild and so crazy and we just clap right along in agreement with him. It's yeah. Just, we see that all dangerous. the time as we watch these services for material. It's, it's quite amazing, but we were part of it. So we understand that it's a crowd mentality. It's part of the way that they can control and manipulate because when you're in a crowd, you just kind of follow. Right. And that's what we're trying to help do with this episode is just get your brain thinking a little bit. Um, Again, we don't have all the answers, and this is not an end-all, be-all episode of all the ways to fix everything. Right. Um, it's more just to get you asking questions and thinking about things. And not just this episode, but this podcast right? as a whole. We really do encourage that. I think it's very important. Uh, I would just say to be cautious about social media as well. Sometimes we look at that as truthful and as what's really going on, and a lot of times what you're seeing is something that's... Um, a painted and filtered and, you know, so really. Yeah. We have to be cautious about that. It's not that you can't find truth out there on the internet, whether it be social media or blogs or even YouTube. Yeah. Um, but we just want to be cautious with everything that we look at. And I think you, you develop this once you realize that maybe you were manipulated or right. deceived in certain ways, yeah. it, you, you start to develop that. Um, another thing you can do to help to reclaim your identity is to reconnect with 
old friends or loved ones for sure. Sometimes we um, were divided from family that didn't go to our denomination because we didn't agree. Yeah, we were really, um, in many ways, discouraged from hanging out or spending uh, any amount of real friendship time with unbelievers in general, but anyone that didn't believe the same truth, or you were just so busy and that was your circle of friends. So you, it just happens sometimes, right, that, that those people fell away. Yes. And division and isolation were practiced, exampled, and encouraged. Like, that's what our example was, was to, we were a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we certainly were. We were isolated, isolated by the way we dressed alone. I mean, women for sure. And so, and we really did consider anyone outside of the organization or the belief systems of the organization, whether that be UPC, WPF, ALJC, some of these other organizations that have the same core belief systems, we wouldn't think they were unsaved, but um, anybody that didn't have the truth and the different doctrinal stands that those organizations have and had, we, we would just think that they were unsaved. So considering everyone outside of the organization as unsaved really creates this us versus them mentality in your brain. So you begin to develop this identity that it's an us versus them. Right. Wrong versus right. Or your whole mission is lot in life is to bring everybody into your belief system. You can probably really speak to uh, reconnecting with loved ones. I know that you had family that didn't go to the UPC church with us. Yeah, it was really important um, to reconnect in a, in a more relational way right. after because I had other family members that did believe in Christ, but they didn't believe the same way. And so right. our relationship around that was very strained, you would say, or we didn't talk about it because... In the past, it was always me trying to convince them that the way that I believed was the right way or the yeah. only way. And so we were ab- I was able to really reconnect with some of my family and friends and um, heal those relationships by saying, hey, I was wrong. Um, we are both now brothers and sisters in Christ and that there isn't division because um, we may have different views on certain small things about the Bible, but right. when it comes down to the major things, we, we believe we that Christ is our savior. Right. And yeah. so we're, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, the institution mattered more than family and friends and we should combat that. That's what you did. That's, that's great. What a great example. Um, our friends and our family is a, they're a supportive network. Like we shouldn't be disconnected from them. I, I, I grew up away from, um, we left my birth city when I was five. So I grew up away from my blood family, like cousins and aunts and uncles. And I, I missed them so much. Mm -hmm. Um, and we of course would go and see them on holidays and stuff, but I just remember it being so sad when we would leave. It just felt like a piece of me was staying somewhere else. I just got so emotional over that. I don't even know why I think because I loved my cousins so much. So I didn't Mm -hmm. grow up with them, but um, that just made me think of that. Like there are, they're a good support system, our blood family for sure. And our close friends. So. Yeah. So we're really encouraging you. If you have relationships that were strained because of the church, it can be so healing to reach out and mend those. Um, yeah. and you may need to apologize like I had to in, in some cases. Yeah, for sure. I think the next one would be to, it kind of ties into that, would be expanding your social circle now that you aren't constrained to uh, maybe a church system. Now you can look outside of that and um, find some some healthy uh, ways to grow your social circle. Yeah, find some good connections. There's a lot of great apps out there. Um, I know the one called Meetup is very helpful for finding even like small um, little coffee shop Bible study type groups, you know, and there it's really great because it gives a um, description about what the group actually is. So you know whether it aligns with you or not, but just showing yourself friendly and showing yourself helpful 
make such great connections with yeah people. i mean community events um yes. wherever you're at in a community you know if you're not isolated somewhere small but even there there's sometimes community events and of course just being careful and making yes. sure that you're 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 with someone else and that you are safe safe and yeah, all that's that. what yeah. i'm trying to say I joined a book club, a ladies book club. When I left, I, uh, it just happened by chance, probably the providence of God for sure. It was what I had, I, I had always wanted to be a part of a book, a book club. And, um, it is so encouraging. I leave there every time we get together once a month and I feel so uplifted. Most of them are believers and, um, I just, but some are not, and that's not, good. And that's and you're good, able to yeah. read books that you would never have been able to maybe, uh, yes, have ever read on my own for sure. Well, I was thinking uh, in the church, you would have been discouraged reading maybe Absolutely. some of those kind of books that challenge our thinking and and yeah, that sort of thing. Points and stuff like that. Yeah. So, what that does for you is um, really gives you a lot of other views around you, and that's very important. Like we've already talked about, uh, that helps you develop things like critical thinking skills. So it's important to have people around you. We weren't meant to do life alone for sure. Yeah. And that ties right into the next one. Rediscovering passions and interests, right? Yeah. We that you might not even have known you had because you didn't have the time or you were told that those were secular things you shouldn't be involved in. Yeah. We were, we were told what to be passionate about, right? Mm -hmm. We were told what our time management should look like. So um, I'm just thinking like, what if you were a guy into sports or something and we weren't allowed to watch them? We weren't allowed to go see them, you right. know? Um, and so I just think f tapping back into what you really enjoy is, I mean, that's going to give you a lot of confidence just in itself for sure. Yeah. I think about some of the things we've been able to do with the interests that you and I have, because we're uh, former church musicians and we, we love different styles of music. And so we've been able to, you know, go to jazz in the park now that we never really would have gotten the opportunity to do prior. Um, and it's not to say that, you know, every single church system wouldn't allow you to do those kinds sure. of things, but a lot of times they would bump up against church services or you just wouldn't be able to really share that with the others in the church because they might frown upon you doing that kind of activity, right? Right. Instead of accepting what other people's interests and, yeah. and the differences and really embracing that and being happy for others that are different than you. Yeah, for sure. Giving in some other way in your community rather than just giving always to, well, I enjoy, you know, um, cooking for the ladies events. Well, it's like, do you really like really think about that? Because you may not. And there's a, a million other ways you could be helping your community rather than just perpetuating a, a yeah, like helping system. at a at a soup kitchen or right. something like that. Right. I think we have a few more. Yes, we do. Um, this is an important one. Prioritizing self care. You get to be your time manager now, not the church. Mm -hmm. And in the church, it was a shovel in one hand. And a sword in the other. Which meant we're fighting God's kingdom we're and we're working. Or we're working. Nonstop. Nonstop. We'll rest when we get to heaven. Yeah. We knew a pastor that said, you, you don't need to rest here. <laughs> That's what heaven is for. Ridiculous. Never mind our own bodies needing to sleep. And we have scripture and that says things like, come to Christ because he will give you rest, right? <laughs> I mean. Yes establishing healthy routines, like whatever that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. um, giving yourself alone time, quiet time, study time, you know, getting exercise, things like this, that um, a lot of times we didn't have time to do really. Yeah. Whatever that looks like for you. Um, the list could go on and on what self-care looks like and, and and we're not leaning over into like the new age side of it in any way shape right. or form we're really talking about just taking care of yourself like simple things of walking and like you mentioned um, and then I think if you were 
really traumatized, um, then therapy may end up needing to be part of that self-care journey, um, uh, depending on your personality or whatever, or yeah. maybe something triggers later on in your life. And so something tailored um, for for you in that situation. I think about if you were really spiritually abused or even were a victim of clergy sexual abuse, um, in those cases, you really may need to um, seek therapy by a trained person professional that can address the trauma and the PTSD that might be there Absolutely. Um, along with the Holy Spirit helping us. But God has given us these professionals to help um, yeah, in those cases. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know how to process through by ourselves. Sometimes we're alone in this journey, right? Not with a spouse or with your family. And so you really maybe need help learning to cope and strategies to do that. And professionals, of course, um, are, are able to do that for us. Yeah. And I think the last one before we wrap would be just be patient with yourself. We've talked about this many times about just allowing the time and allowing you to not, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not going to be able to do all the things that we talked about in an orderly way. We're still learning all of those things as well. And we've been out for, you know, multiple years at this point. Right. So just acknowledging that it's going to be challenging is, is a big one. Like mm -hmm. it's okay to have emotional and psychological hurdles. Those are, they need to be validated. Those are real. You know, you're coming out of a system that was possibly very, very controlling. And um, so you have to just give yourself time and space for sure. And moving at your own pace. Yeah. Um, I was in Costco a few weeks back and um, turned an aisle turned down an aisle and saw someone from my old church. And, um, I immediately, I didn't obviously look like a UPC -er. I was dressed very different and, um, I immediately felt scared and worried and my fight or flight for sure kicked in. I was like, I've got to get out of here. I'm not ready to deal with this. I, um, and I didn't, I, I, put my shopping cart away and I went out to my car and I cried because I was frustrated at myself for not being able to have faced that situation. Yeah. Um, but I also knew that it's okay to not be ready yet, you know? And, um, well, I just think that so much of that pressure on you really comes from the trauma and, and therefore the PTSD of being in one of these systems and feeling like you have to have the answers and you have to do every right thing. And, Mm -hmm. and so much of the control of that weighs heavily on that decision and everyone's going to process it differently. Like for me, that probably wouldn't been, but I'm also not a woman. I'm a man that, um, doesn't have, well, now I look a little different than I did in the church, but what it looks like for a woman to go through the change of not being in the control of the standards of the church. Right. And so that's, that's a huge part of it. And so, and so just being okay with, you know what, I'm not ready for this right now. Maybe I will be next year. Maybe I, or maybe I won't. It doesn't matter. You know, like setting small goals is important. And, and, and not, um, neglecting the fact that we have a heavenly father that we can pour all these things yes. on, right? Like he's there to hear, um, our heartaches and the things that we're dealing with, the struggles. And so in that situation, being able to go, Father, why do I think this way? Why am I feeling this way? Please take this heavy burden off of me um, and and help me to have strength um, because in you, I have that strength, right? You've given me the power to overcome those things. Amen. Yeah. So, um, and just celebrating the progress, right? Because there are things that we're growing in every day and um, you should um, pat yourself on the back for those, for sure. Yeah, especially because this is such a big journey and quite frankly, people that haven't been in these kinds of systems, even other Christians don't have a full understanding of what it's like to be in it, be a part of it, come through it, 
the yeah. whole process. And so when you can feel like you've accomplished another step in that journey, yeah, you should celebrate that. And if you yeah. do have um, those around you that that do understand, like being able to celebrate with them is, is really huge. Yeah. Well, um, those wrap up our steps for hoping to um, reclaim our identity once we've gotten out. Like we said, it can be very, very hard to really even know who you are when you come out of it. Yeah, and if we missed one or you think of a really important one, yeah. drop a note below. Uh, send us a note if you if you don't want, if you want to be anonymous, um, but we want to hear from you. Yes. Uh, we're just going to read a few scriptures as we wrap up just to... Um, really solidify the fact that we are we work out our own salvation and that we are autonomous to some extent because we are getting our help from scripture and from the lord um, we don't need another man or woman or any person really to um, be dictating all be that dictating that yeah uh, first thessalonians 4 9 through 12 says now concerning brotherly love you have no need for anyone to write to you for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you brothers to do this more and more and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Yeah. And, and that's why just being um, a regular person, you know, yeah. where you're not standing out in some flamboyant way, but just um, doing again, quietly living your life, um, being involved in the things that you're involved in walking just a, a quiet and peaceable life with Christ uh, is what the scripture instructs us to do. And that's so others can see that. Right, right. Showing love. Yeah, the, the showing love is the important part. Philippians 2, um, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work his Good pleasure. Yeah. Our identity is based in him. He's doing the work in us. The Holy Spirit is leading, guiding, instructing, convicting all the things. And so we really lean on that as Christians and we work through the, um, the hard spots on our own mm -hmm. and with serious soberness. Yeah. Because really we're the ones that live in our own heads. We're the ones yeah. that have to deal with the ups and downs of our emotional being right. right every single day. And we can, we can lean on God's word and we can lean on his spirit, but ultimately we have to deal with that within ourself. Yeah. Romans 14, one through five, as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another while another esteems all days alike each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Yeah, and that's why we do this podcast because we want to help others understand the freedom that you have in Christ to make right. these decisions and not to be controlled by a system telling you everybody needs to do this, 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 and that this way every single time, every single way, every single day. Yeah. Um, that's so controlling and so anti what God made us as individuals. And if yes. you want to adhere to some of the ways that the UPC or other organizations still believe, that that's fine. But you can't try to put those on everyone else around you because you think that you have the upper hand on the scripture. Yeah, we're not cookies cut out by a cookie cut no. out, you know? He made us individual. Second Timothy 3, verses 15 and 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it <laughs> and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which is the scripture, right? Yeah. Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, 
for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Yeah, we look to him for sure and to his word for our instruction. And it is how we develop our identity as yeah. believers, at least. Yeah, as know. believers, remembering that our identity in Christ is dynamic. It's a journey of growth, transformation yeah. and alignment with God's purpose, right? Yeah. In our lives. And so it's not confined to a church or um, church walls or a church system, but really extends to every aspect of our life. And so once you once you realize that, you can live in that abundant freedom, knowing that um, his purpose is going to be accomplished when we trust in him Amen. and we have faith. Yes. We sure hope that this um, episode, although it's maybe a little different than some of the ones we have had recently, has yeah. been helpful to just get you thinking about um, having an identity that's not wrapped around the apostolic faith apostolic identity yeah. right the apostolic <laughs> identity but one that's rooted in christ and some of the practical ways of reclaiming your autonomy as a christian who's no longer being controlled by a man-made system and to just remember that it's for freedom that christ made us free so we look to him for our salvation that was purchased a long time ago and through faith, we are saved, and that's where I, our identity is. That's so true. Um, if you made it to the end, you're a trooper. As always, we um, appreciate those that come back each week um, and are along this journey with us. And those yes. that are new, welcome to the Grace Escape podcast. If this is something that you've enjoyed, um, make sure you subscribe and follow yeah. on your platform so that you don't miss an episode. Uh, next week, I think, is going to be a good one. We're already planning on that one. And so you don't want to miss it, <laughs> right? Um, That's all so, you're going to say? So yeah. subscribe. No, uh, I hate to give it a title, but um, the idea is rules for thee, not for me. And so oh, talking yes. about the class system of the church and yeah. really what that looks like um, in the Bible versus what the church system and kind of dispelling some of that. Yeah, that'll be good. So meet us back here again next time or next week or whenever or tomorrow, however often you listen. Um, and <laughs> we hope that uh, you have a very blessed week. And we thank have you. a really hard time saying goodbye every week. But must, we just must love our friends. <laughs> we hope you have a blessed week. See you yeah. next time. Bye. Bye.